Hey YouTube, so I'm on baby step number six of Dave Ramsey's uh, seven baby steps. And the reason why I'm doing these is to kind of um, make it a little bit more plain English for some uh, beginners who are just looking to uh, take control of their finances. You know, a lot of times we hear experts say uh, certain things or throw out certain numbers and, you know, us as beginners who have never been in this arena might scratch our heads and go, huh, or why, you know, and sometimes a lot of that is, is over our heads, you know, you need a million dollars to retire. Why? You need to save 15% of your income. Why? You know, um, none of those, none of those things really help a beginner. A lot of times it, um, instills fear, you know, that, that they'll never be able to do something or they can't retire unless they have a million dollars. Right. So that's kind of why I, that was kind of the point of making these, these videos. So baby step number six, you have to excuse me, I'm still kind of ill. Baby step number six is pay off your home. And the reason for that, obviously, is because housing is your biggest expense. Especially, um, it would be best to not have housing expense as far as a mortgage or rent in retirement because that would be your absolute biggest expense in retirement. And when you don't have um, income coming in from a, from a job, um, you want to reduce your expenses as much as you can. So that's why I put on here an easier retirement. You know, if you have a mortgage of $1,000 or rent of $1,200, $1,300, $1,400, you know, that's a big chunk of money coming out and with, that you need to account for in retirement. Now, if that were to just go away and you didn't have it or it wasn't as high, you know, you, you can add years uh, on how long your portfolio can last you in retirement. Now, when people say home, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a blanket statement because what is home to you? There are, you know, the traditional stick and brick home that most of us know about, right? Um, neighborhoods of homes that, you know, the majority of the population live in. But there's also, you know, alternatives. There's options. You know, there's people that have bought uh, that don't mind living um, out in out of population centers. You know, they might have an acre of land. They might put a trailer on it. That probably cost them, you know, eight grand for the piece of land, you know, 20 grand for the trailer. And, you know, that might be you. That might, that might be what you need or want or desire. You know, it doesn't have to be a two hundred, three hundred, five hundred thousand dollar home. You know, that, that, that may not be what you want. So that's why I say when people, when these experts come out with these things, it, it is so blanket statement that it's, that it can be detrimental to people. You know, another option is, um, condos. Condos are usually cheaper, but they have some maintenance costs, but you know, the, the, a lot of the exterior maintenance on condos are, are, paid for you know monthly by you but it's paid for by everybody so it's kind of like a pool of money that that goes to fix the roof paint the exterior you know landscaping etc um, I covered land and possibly a trailer um, you could do like I'm gonna do and that's uh, buy an RV and travel there's there's a lot of um, places around the country that you can stay or that you can stay for free 
Um, there's long-term visitor areas in parts of Arizona where you can, Arizona and California, I want to say, that you can stay all year long for next to nothing. You know, a lot of these big cities are cracking down on, on people living in RVs or vehicles, but that's a very viable way to live if, if that's what you choose. And it's a very cheap way to live, too. And so is buying the land and putting a trailer on it. There's nothing wrong with those those options. You know, I think a lot of uh, society today um, has us looking at at you know the bigger the better and and you know the flashier the better and sometimes that's not what brings you joy whatever brings you joy if you sit in uh in a mountain community you know and you have your own little piece of land and a, and a trailer and you you can see the stars and you're outside watching the sunset if that's what you enjoy if that's what brings you happiness then great but if what brings you happiness is is uh, a high-rise uh, apartment building in New York or San Francisco you know you got some work to do <laughs> these are you know not very inexpensive those aren't very inexpensive ways to go but homes are your biggest expense uh, for instance, when I came here to Fresno, California, I got my first apartment in 1995, and it was $330 a month. And two or three years later, I moved up to a two-bedroom apartment and went to 465 That was like in 96, roughly. And then met my wife, had a kid, had a couple kids, and... You know, rent went up. We moved up to uh, a nicer apartment for seven seventy-five in the year two thousand five, and then, you know, in the two thousand tens, we went to another, moved to another townhouse, and that was eleven hundred. And now we're in this house where we pay twelve fifty, and so, you know, over twenty years, my housing costs has, you know, increased four hundred percent. So if you're young, try to buy the property that you want. You know, and I know a lot of times people say, oh, you know, buy a starter home and whatever. But yeah, you know, I don't like, I, I don't believe in getting into that race of upgrading, 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 because then you'll end up you know in your mid 40s or 50s and then you'll upgrade again and then you'll have a 30-year mortgage and then now you're carrying the note into retirement and that's what you want to avoid you want to avoid having uh, a mortgage or rent in retirement so i hope this helped you um, if you have any comments questions please leave them down below and we'll talk to you later thanks Bye bye